Today, Mighty Car Mods, we're going to show you how to fix up the look of your car using color match paint in a can. Welcome to another episode of Mighty Car Mods, and Mighty, your car is looking like rubbish. What do you mean? My car's a sleeper. It's awesome. You cannot use the term sleeper as an excuse for a car that looks like that. There are mismatched panels, the bumpers are damaged, the whole thing looks like a massive grey turd. It's absolute rubbish. So what are we going to do to fix it? Well, sometimes when you buy second-hand cars, you know, they might be mechanically great, they might have lots of rego, they might be well looked after, but sometimes the panels can be less than perfect. But that doesn't have to be a deal breaker, does it? So what are we going to do, Martin? Today. What's that process? What's the plan? Yeah, today. Get me excited, Martin. I'm all getting juiced up about it. Tell me, Martin. Today we're going to give the whole car a makeover. The whole car, Martin. Using cans. Using cans? Cans. Are we going to be using cans of donkey's bunk and urine and beer like we've painted cars in the past? Or are we actually going to use paint? We're going to use colour match paint. Today we're working on Marty's Turbo Liberty Wagon, affectionately referred to as Gramps. It's pretty ugly, of course it is, because Marty bought it, but we're hoping some love with a spray can will help. The bumper got backed into and the side panel got jiggy with a metal fence. All over, it's looking pretty sad and it's got all the usual real world damage a daily driven car has to deal with. We're using colour spec paint that can be matched up to the colour of your car via the paint code, which usually lives on a plate inside the engine bay. The code is then matched up and made using various bases and tinters and measured by weight. The mixture is then pressed into a can which is mad and this contains the propellant and thinners to make it spray evenly onto the car. You can mix up all sorts of colours. Just find out the paint code for the colour that you want and then take it in to get it matched. This means you can do interior parts, accents or absolutely any object in any colour that you can see on a car. So Marty, are we about to pull your whole car apart? Um, that's one way of doing it. It's, you kind of got to make the decision whether you want to pull more panels off and do less masking or do more masking and leave them on. You can take the panels off the car and then paint them, which means you don't need to worry about masking anything. But to show you guys, we've decided to leave the panels on the car. But remember, you do run the risk of overspray, so keep that in mind. Taking off panels means zero masking, but there is more spanner spinning, so work out what is going to be best for you. If you're masking up, first run masking tape along the edges of the panel. It's a good idea to cover your wheels too, and garbage bags make this really quick and easy. We're using newspaper, but you can use plastic drop sheets which have the added bonus of being waterproof. If your panel is brand new or has no imperfections, you won't need much preparation at all. Just clean it down well before you paint. You've got to make sure you shake up the cans really well or they won't spray evenly. So give them a good fat for at least a minute before you use them for the first time. Next up, we're going to rub back the old paint. The idea is to get rid of any obvious edges as they will show up under the finished paint job. Next up, we're going to clean the bar with wax and grease remover, and then we could spray on the filler primer over any damage. Our guard is undamaged, so we can paint the primer straight onto the lightly scuffed panel. You can use really fine sandpaper or scotch bright pads to roughen up the surface. Build up the layers of primer slowly so you don't get any runs. It's going to be mad, man. Primed. Optimus Primer. What a mad show. Then sit around and wait for your paint to dry. Repeat this process until you've got good coverage or you've run out of paint. Once your filler primer is fully dry, you can crack out your whizzer and sand it back. You're trying to remove any edges and build the paint up to the same level as the existing stuff. Shake up your filler primer again by giving it a good fat before you spray out another coat. So 
so this is where we're at this front quarter panel here now has around four coats of primer on it it's looking very awesome so next up we're going to rub that back and then that gets base coat on it and then we do the clear coat it's going to look unreal the front we've got the high fill primer here so that's filling in all the little uh, all the little nicks and crannies and nooks and all those other little bits and pieces so that there we're going to rub back and then that gets primer on it a number of coats rubbed back then that gets the base coat and then that gets the clear coat on top and the whole thing is going to look freaking unreal so as always it's best to check it with your hand to make sure that it's flat because sometimes it might look flat but when you feel it you can feel a little bump and the idea with the primer and with the filler primer is to get it as flat as possible and just sand it back it'll take a couple of goes but it'll be totally worth it when you've done the top coat we're giving the guard a light sand with 600 grit sandpaper to make sure it's smooth and ready for the base coat so a good tip when you're painting is you want to shake the can until you're actually getting these indentations on the bottom. I don't know if you can see them on the camera, but you can definitely feel them. And that means that everything inside that can is ready to party all over your car. Literally spray itself all over the front of your vehicle. It's a good idea to spray a primer over the filler primer to make sure you've got good paint adhesion. So the wind is picked up outside, so we've moved the car into the shed and we're just remasking some areas of it because the worst thing that can happen is crap falling in your paint and ruining your mad paint job. So now that the primer has dried, the next thing we're gonna do is rub it back with fine grade sandpaper so it's ready for its final coat. Now, a lot of the time, if you're doing a whole car, you've got a lot of time up your sleeve, you can rub the whole thing back with wet sandpaper. I don't like to do that for the quicker and smaller jobs because you can get water in your paint and it completely ruins it. You can be halfway through spraying, water that you haven't cleaned off will drip in it and ruin it. So we're gonna rub it back dry, we're gonna clean it up with wax and grease, then we're gonna do our top coat and our clear and it's gonna be mad. Next, rub back the primer. You can whiz it out, but make sure you use a fine grade paper so you don't see scratch marks through the base coat. Can't stress enough, everything has to be dry. If you get water in the paint, you will ruin your paint job and everyone will laugh at you. Just like if you drive an MX-5. And have lots of hair dryers available. This is your hair dryer. Is I, it? I don't need these, dude, you do. <laughs> Now probably the most common mistake people make when they're repairing and painting panels is they try and just mask off a part of the panel. So if this part of the panel down here was fine, for example, they'll mask all of that off and then they will get their paint and they'll dust it on. And what you'll see, even with just this example, is once your paint's done and you pull this off, you will see a massive line going down here. Now you can see that already, so the way to actually fix that is either do the whole panel, which is what we're going to be doing, or if you only need to paint part of it, then just blend it in by dusting the paint. So getting lighter and lighter as you get up near the panel where there is no damage and doesn't need to be repainted. Blending is an art in itself, and there's a whole lot that can be said about that. But for us, we're just going to do the whole panel. All of the prep is done, so now we get to do our mad paint job. That is looking awesome, Marty. Already, look at that. It's a transformation of Gramps. He's dyed his hair grey again. Look at it. <laughs> it's awesome. And the trick with that is to do like a your first coat kind of light and dust it on because that helps the paint after it stick. And it's, it'll... it's like wrapping a part of your body in double-sided tape so that when you put more on it, it sticks to it, isn't it, Martin? Exactly. Don't know why you'd ever do that. You've never done that? Why would you do that? You never wrap stuff in gaffer tape so it doesn't... You never did that? So something to keep in mind is when you're doing your primer, primer is quite forgiving because if you get it wrong, you can sand it off and go again. Even the clear coat you put over the top of the lot of it is quite forgiving because you can buff it back. The one thing you can't fix is base coat. So if you get a run in your base coat, you basically have to wait for it to dry and then start all over again. Also, this is the point where you're gonna notice if there's any problems with your prep work, this is where you're gonna see it. So if it looks like you haven't done a proper job, you can always wait for it to dry, sand it back and go again until you get a perfect job. Next up, you're going to apply multiple layers of base coat until you've got an even finish. You do not want runs in your base coat as it's really hard to correct, so spray it on slowly and evenly. 
So the primer is on and the base coat is on and that has been an epic afternoon's work. And now, Martin, this is the exciting bit. We can put on the clear coat, which is when the whole thing is going to bloom and look incredible. Except we're not going to put the clear coat on. We're not putting clear coat on. No. Is this some weird Mighty Mods thing? No. Some new trend. No, we no, don't no, do no. clear coats anymore. No, you We like paint things with avocado and rust and urine. If you don't do... Why are we not putting clear coat? If you We've don't... got the clear coat. We've got cans of clear coat. If you don't... We've already got it. I don't understand why we're not putting clear coat on. The whole idea of this job is that you do the primer, you fix the problems, you do the base coat, you colour on, and then it's meant to have clear coat. That's why it looks the best. If you don't put clear coat on, your painting will look completely crap. But the other problem, if you rush paint, we've said this again, if you rush painting, you'll ruin it. So, because we're running out of light and we're also running out of heat, we're going to wait and we're going to do the clear coat in the morning. We're going to wait! I know. I wanted to finish it now so we could go too. cruising down so Church bad. Street. Me too, so bad. But so many paint jobs have been ruined by doing that. Let's just do it now. No. Nah. Do we really have to wait? Yeah. Until tomorrow morning? It's only like 12 hours away. Man. Oh man! Why are we doing that again? Because if because if you don't, your paint will look crap. So we, we want it to totally dry properly so that the clear coat best shows off what we've done so far. Precisely. So tomorrow morning we finish it off? Yeah. So I have to wait all night, but with the magic of editing, we'll cut to the next day, right now! Once the base coat has fully dried, spray on the clear coat. And the more layers of this, the better. Don't be worried if the paint isn't glossy straight out of the can, as paint out of a rattle can often needs to be polished to bring out the shine. Once you've given the clear coat time to harden, rub it back using a cutting compound. An electric buffer will make this much easier, but it is possible to do it by hand too. We've gone from this to this. And that is how you touch up your mad car with rattle cans.